Welcome to the Gospel Safari. Join us for the next half hour as we take you on a journey through the limitless gospel of Jesus Christ. Together, we will bring sinners into the kingdom of God while allowing sinners to mature and prepare for the coming of the Lord. And now your host, Pastor Steve Magua. Good morning, good morning, St. Louis. Uh, this is Pastor Steve Magua yet again on the Gospel Safari. I am very excited once again this morning uh, to come to you uh, at KJSL 6.30 a.m. And just to present you with the Gospel Safari, this is a show that focuses on teaching the principles of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, giving bread for the journey, strengthening those who are on the journey towards heaven, those who are on the highway of holiness. Well, this morning, uh, uh, first of all, I just want to begin by uh, you know, just giving a shout out to our guest who was here last week, my wife, uh, Catherine Munyori. Uh, she came and visited us with, uh, with us uh, for our first show. Our, our maiden show was last week, uh, and it was wonderful, and we loved having her here. And uh, now she's back in uh, Baltimore uh, because, as I said in the last show, we are moving from uh, Baltimore to St. Louis, and uh, she had just come to visit with us here uh, for two purposes. She had come to uh, help me to look for a house uh, because we've been looking for a house to live in. And also she had come to be part of the first show that we were having here on the Gospel Safari. And now she's back in Baltimore, and we just want to send out a shout-out to her and blessings from the Lord uh, to her and thanking her for coming and uh, being here with us. Now, as we said last week, the Gospel Safari. Now, Safari is a Swahili word and uh, it's a Swahili word that uh, means journey uh, and of course the gospel is the good news so this show is the the good news journey this is uh, about the the path and, and and the way that has been marked out for us by our Lord Jesus Christ that we have been called to those of us who call themselves the disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ this is a show that focuses on not only teaching one how to become a part of the redeemed how to become a part of the church of Jesus Christ but also how to walk this journey how to run this race so that at the end of the race you can receive a crown so that at the end of the race you can receive a reward because it, it does not make any sense whatsoever to run a race or or, or, or to to get into something uh, and do it all your life and then at the end of it all End up, uh, end up having nothing, end up having, uh, not receiving the reward. And, and this show is, is, is here to equip you. This show is here to challenge you. This show is here to, to help you along, to pray for you, uh, and to answer any questions that you might have. So uh, before we begin today, I just want to encourage uh, our listeners out there, as you're listening uh, to, to our program, to our teachings about the gospel of Jesus Christ, if, if you have any questions, if you have any concerns, if, if you have any comments, we welcome you to really just uh, write to us. You can write to us on email. Uh, that is the gospel safari at gmail.com. The gospel safari at gmail.com. You can call me 314 441 6177. And having said that, I, I just want to go ahead and launch into uh, our teaching for today. Now, last week we began uh, looking at the at this journey that we are going on and how the, the word of God describes it. And we were going out of Isaiah. Uh, 35, and that's where I would like to begin today, Isaiah 35, and uh, today I will just read Isaiah 35 from verse 8 to verse 10, which describes uh, the four aspects of this journey that we talked about, and this is what Isaiah 35, 8 to 10 says, and a highway will be there, it will be called the way of holiness, the unclean will not journey on it, it will be for those who walk in that way, wicked fools will not go about on it. No lion will be there, nor will any ferocious beast get up on it. They will not be found there, but only the redeemed will walk there. And the ransomed of the Lord will return. They will enter Zion with singing. Everlasting joy will crown their heads. Gladness and joy will overtake them, and sorrow and sighing will flee away. 
praise the name of the living God. This is this is the, the, the journey that we are walking on, this on this highway of holiness that we have been called to. And, and it says here, there's four things that I, I, I want us to, to note here. Last week we talked about that there will be a highway, that the way of the Lord is a highway. It is not a low way. It is a way of high morality. It is a way of, of, of high exploits. It, it, it is a way that you are, you are called to do uh, bigger than life things by the power of, of the Holy Spirit. Then secondly, it is a way of holiness. And we are going to look a little bit of, at, at a little bit of that today. It is a way of holiness. Thirdly, it is a way of safety. I want you to notice there in, in, in verse 9, it says that no lion will be there, nor will any ferocious beast get up on it. They will not be found there. Only the redeemed will walk there. So it is a way of safety. And finally, it is also a way of joy. It is a way of joy now while we are walking on the way. And it is also a way of, of ultimate joy because the, the, the reason why God wants us to walk upon this way, the reason why God has called us into his kingdom is so that eventually we can come into his presence and live with him forever and enjoy him because the Bible says that in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of of joy, so we are being invited to walk in, in in safety while we are here. We are being you know invited to walk in in holiness, so that at the end of the of, of the way we will come to a place of great 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 joy. And so these are the four things that we are looking at. But for today, our focus is going to be uh, uh, in verse eight. The second part where it says it will be called the highway of holiness. The unclean will not journey on this way. It will be for those who walk in that way. Wicked fools will not go on about it. And you see, um, brethren, as I was uh, meditating upon this uh, passage and, and also upon our program today and, and, and what uh, we, are, we are learning about this way of the Lord and, and the journey, uh, the, the gospel safari as it, as it were, uh, the Lord began to impress upon me that we need, we, maybe we need to take a few steps back and, and go back to the beginning because, you know, we can begin to go on a journey and, and, and we, we, we can really even get on, on, on the, in, in the vehicle or in the, in the airplane or on the train. And then, uh, but, but we, we might find on the way that maybe we don't even know where we are going or maybe we really didn't uh, uh, identify and define where we were going in the first place. And so the Lord impressed upon me that uh, in, in today's show, we are going to look at how do you get into the journey? In other words, putting it in another way, how do you become a Christian? How do you become saved? How is it that you can begin to walk on this journey and be assured that at the end of the way, you will actually arrive and be rewarded. Now, why is this so important uh, to find out how you do this? Because first of all, uh, brethren, it says here in, in, in verse 8, the unclean will not journey on it. In another version, it says the, the wicked will not be able to walk on this way. In the New Living Translation, it says, evil minded will never travel on this way. Now, I want to also alert you to another passage of scripture that uh, you may be familiar with or not, but if you're not, I would like for you to, to think about it. Now, in, in Matthew chapter 7, uh, verse 13 and verse 14, uh, and I just want to read it to us. Matthew chapter 7, verse 13 and verse 14. This is what uh, Jesus says. He says, enter through the narrow gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many enter through it. But small is the gate, and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. Now you see, the, 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 the interesting thing, and actually the thing that, that ought to really pack up our ears here is that Jesus says that there are many who have entered a wide gate and there are many who are walking down a broad road and they will end up in destruction. But you need to know that the context of this passage is that they believe in their hearts that they are actually in the right way. They believe in their hearts that they are doing the right things. They believe in their hearts that they believe in God and they believe in Jesus and that they are, they are baptizing the Holy Spirit and they are following the scriptures. But in the end, they find that they have not actually entered into the right way. But it says, but narrow is the gate and, and difficult is the way. Or, or, or it, it says here, but small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life and only a few find it. So it is very important. And in, in the second part of the show, we will look at, at more importantly, how can you make sure that you are on the right path? Because the Bible says that, you know, uh, that there is a way that uh, a man may think is right. 
And then in the end, he finds that it is the way that leads him to destruction. And of course, we don't want to enter into uh, such a kind of a de deception. And, and many people are in a deception because on the last day, many will come to the Lord and they will say, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Lord, Lord, have we not performed miracles in your name? Have we not cast out demons in your name? And Jesus will turn to them and say, I don't know you. Yes, you came to my churches. Yes, you profess my name. Yes, you gave your offerings and everything, but you you actually were not one of mine. And that is what I want us to uh, look at uh, uh, today. Now, we are going to take a, a short break here. Uh, we have a song here by uh, one of my... Um, you know, a, a, a young lady from my, my country, uh, her name is Masi Wairegi, and the song is called Never Be the Same Again, because we don't want to ever be the same again.
Welcome back to the Gospel Safari. This is again uh, Pastor Stephen Magua. I am, uh, uh, we are continuing to, to look at uh, this journey that uh, we, are, we are getting onto and that we are traveling as we seek the Lord and we seek his face and we, as we seek to be found ready when the Lord Jesus Christ um, returns. And that is the goal of our show is really to, to first of all just encourage those who are not yet on the journey to come into the journey, to strengthen those who are on the journey and to prepare uh, all of us for the return of the Lord. And we have been speaking about how to begin the journey. How do you become a born again Christian? How do you become uh, one who is qualified to receive the the, the blessings of, of God? And I, I remember before we went to break, we were, we were talking about the fact that on the last day, there are many people who will go to the Lord Jesus believing that they are true believers, believing that they have served God and they will be turned away because, and this is what, what the, the, this show is about today, it is because they did not begin right, because they did not enter through the right door. Now, how can you sh make sure that you enter through the right door? Now, I want to speak about a couple things. Uh, there's five actually things that uh, you can practically do to make sure that you are in the right way, which means if you're already a Christian or if you are thinking to be a Christian or if you have been a Christian, you look at these things and if you have really uh, been into these things, you, you will know them uh, instinctively or you will know that this is the way that you need to follow. Number one, you need to hear the genuine gospel. We cannot emphasize this any more than 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 uh you know it needs to be you have to hear the genuine gospel of jesus christ number two you have to be transformed by that gospel that you hear number three there has to be evidence that the gospel that you heard has actually transformed you is actually working on you and doing a work in you now number four you must be baptized that is the outward evidence of, of uh, the inward work that the, ho that the Holy Ghost does through the, the, uh, the word of uh, the gospel. And then number five, you must receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which is the power for the journey. Now, why do I say those things? Now, if you, if you have a Bible, I want you to turn with me to Ephesians chapter 2. And I'll, I'll make this as practical as possible uh, so that if you are walking on this journey, you are looking to walk on this journey, you can be encouraged that uh, this is something that the Lord wants, you, wants for you. Now, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and verse 9, uh, we are given uh, a, a very clear definition of what it means to be saved. It says here, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this not from yourselves, it is the gift of works. Verse 9, not by works so that no one can boast. Let me repeat that again. For it is by grace that you have been saved through faith. And this not from yourselves. It is the gift of God. It is not by works so that anyone can boast. So the first thing that we, we realize here is that nobody can do anything really to save themselves. You cannot save yourself. You cannot make a decision. You cannot, uh, you cannot pay a payment. You cannot, uh, you know, go. There's not enough education. There's not enough money in the world. There is not enough effort. You cannot work your way into heaven heaven. Salvation is a gift from God. It's a gift of grace. Now, how do we become saved? According to the Bible. Now, it says here in, 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 in Romans chapter 1, and I, and I mentioned this uh, passage last week, that I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. In other words, for anyone to become saved, they must be saved through the hearing of the gospel. In other words, there, there must be a preacher somewhere, there must be a teacher somewhere, there must be a church somewhere that is preaching the powerful gospel of Jesus Christ. And this powerful gospel of Jesus Christ is what actually performs the work inside the heart of the sinner, inside of the, of the heart of the person who is not yet saved, and begins to convict them of their sinfulness, and begins to convict them of the righteousness of God, and begins to convict them of the judgment that is coming and it shows them you need to run to Christ. You need to run to the cross. You need to believe that Jesus Christ paid the price for you. Otherwise, if you don't believe that, then you already are condemned and you will find yourself in eternal damnation. So the first thing is that you have to hear the genuine gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, the question that I will ask you right now, listener, is this. Have you heard the genuine gospel of Jesus Christ? Have you heard a soul-searching one? Are you, wherever you are, you are fellowshipping, are you hearing a soul-searching one? 
word? Is the word that is coming to you, is it sharper than a two-edged sword? Is it being able to, to come into your heart and, 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 and expose all the things that are in there, the motives and everything, then, and causing you to, 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 to be convicted and to be broken and to know, oh, woe is me. Like Isaiah said in, in Isaiah chapter 6, he says, in the year that I saw the Lord, in the year that King Uzziah died and I, and I saw the Lord, uh, and, and he was high and lifted up and, and the train of his robe filled the temple. The Bible says that Isaiah said of himself, woe is me, for I am undone. I am a man of unclean lips and I live amongst the people of unclean lips. So the, when the gospel comes, it convicts us very deeply. It begins to move things within us. It is not something we do. It is the power of God that is working within us. So that's the first thing. Now, secondly, number two, uh, I say that for you to begin this journey, to, to begin to walk upon this journey, the gospel must transform you. You see, in Ephesians chapter 2, where I just read, it says it is not of works. It is not of anything good that you do. It is not about you accepting Jesus. It is not you about you becoming a member of a church. It is not about you even reading the Bible or, or praying. And all these things are important things. But rather, the question is, is the word of God performing a supernatural work in you that even you yourself notices that this is not me? Even you yourself, even those people who are around you can say there is something happening to you. There is a supernatural thing that is happening in you, that, that is changing you. It says here, be transformed by the gospel. Uh, you know, th th there's a passage that, that Paul speaks about in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. And that passage says that if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. He, he, the old things pass away and, and behold, he becomes new. In other words, when, when the power of God comes upon a person, it doesn't matter who they are. It doesn't matter what part of the world they come from. It doesn't matter what gender they are. It doesn't matter what age they are either. When the power of God comes into the life of a person, it will do the same thing. There will be conviction of sin. There will be conviction, conviction of righteousness. There will be conviction of judgment. There will be conviction of the power of God. And there will be a transformation that begins to happen. Now, the third thing is... And, and this is what, where you have to examine yourself. You know, 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5 says, examine yourself, test yourself, prove it, show that you really are in the faith. How do you do this? You look for the evidences, biblical evidences of, of transformation in your life. You don't look for what you believe. You don't look for what you feel. You look for what does the Bible say that will happen to a person when the power of God has fallen upon them. And the evidence, the first evidence is repentance. The first evidence is that when the power of God comes upon you and begins to show you what you really are. The power of God begins to show you that not only have all sinned, but you yourself have sinned. You yourself have fallen short of the glory of God, and, and the wages of sin is death, and you are worthy of death, and you are worthy of condemnation, and you begin to cry out to God, and you begin to say, God, I do not want to be the same. I do not want to continue to live the way I've been living. I do not want to continue to think the way that I've been thinking. I don't want to continue to, to deal with my, my spouse, or my children, or my co-workers, or even my, my church members. I don't want to deal with them the way that I've been dealing with them. I don't want to think about them the things that I've been thinking. Maybe you have been mean or maybe you have been unforgiving carrying grudges. Whatever it is God begins to change that. God begins to convict you that that's not the way of God. The way of love is kindness. The way of love is joy. The way of love is, is peace. There is going to be repentance and repentance simply means a change of mind. It means a change of attitude. It means a change of thoughts. It means a change of behavior. It means that you begin to be changed in such drastic ways that you will know this is not just something that I can work towards. This has to be the supernatural work of God in me. Now, number four, it, 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 you, you have to be baptized. Now, it, it, there's a passage uh, in, in, of Scripture when, when the Holy Spirit came on the day of Pentecost and Peter is preaching the gospel. Uh, you know, the Holy Spirit comes and the people are saying, oh, these people must be drunk because they are speaking in tongues and, you know, praising God and doing all these things. And Peter begins to preach the gospel and he tells these people, these people are not drunk. Let me explain to you what has happened. The Holy Spirit has come into their lives. The power of God has fallen upon them. And, and as he preaches this gospel, as he preaches this genuine gospel that I'm talking about, this soul searching gospel, this, this convicting gospel, this gospel that exposes the glory of God and also exposes the wickedness of men, the fallenness of men, the, uh, uh, this gospel begins to convict people. Because I, I, I want to read this passage to you and I want you to note it. It's Acts chapter 2 and verse 37 and verse 38. Acts 2, 37 and 38. If you have a Bible, you can you can turn there with me. I just I just want to share this because it's such a such a wonderful passage here about what it takes to be saved. It says here that uh, the people uh, began to in verse thirty-seven. When the people heard this, they were cut 
to their heart. Now look at that. He says, when the people heard what Peter was saying, what Peter was preaching, they were cut to their heart. And they say to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? In other words, these people had, there's something that had happened to them in the process of listening to the message of the gospel. They did not have to be coerced. They did not have to be told, oh, everybody close your eyes and whoever wants to accept Jesus, raise your hand. No, no, no. These people, something was happening in their hearts and they demanded an answer from the preacher. They said, there's something happening in my heart. I am cut to my heart. I am convicted. You must tell me now, what can I do to cure this malady of my heart? What can I do to cure this? pain that I feel, this burden that I now feel that I'm carrying that I did not know before that I was carrying. Now that I know that I am undone, now that I know that, uh, you know, I'm, I, I'm a man of unclean lips and, and I stand before a holy God and if I stand before him like this, I will be condemned. What shall I do? And verse 38 is just such a beautiful passage of scripture. Peter says, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So, dear brethren, after you repent, the evidence that you repent is that you seek to be baptized. Being baptized is the outward sign that you have repented. And finally, you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. You will receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will come and overshadow you and fill you and give you the power to walk on this journey. Dear brethren, we have been speaking about the gospel safari, getting on the journey. And getting on the journey means that you have to hear the gospel. You have to hear the gospel. You have to seek out to hear the gospel. You have to be transformed by this gospel. There has to be evidence of repentance. You need to be baptized. Yes, being baptized in water. It is not the baptism that saves you, but it is the evidence that, you, that something supernatural has happened uh, to you. Just like, you know, when we go to a wedding and we put on a ring, the, the ring does not make us married, but the ring is a symbol, is an outward symbol of what is happening in our hearts, of, of, the, of the love that we have for our spouses. Hallelujah. So this, this morning, as, as you listen to this message, I want to ask you a question. Are you truly born again? Are you truly walking on the journey? Have you received the Holy Spirit? Have you had the, the genuine gospel of, the, of, of Jesus Christ? Have you been transformed? Is, is there a, 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 an evidence that God has done a supernatural work in you and is continuing to do a supernatural work in you or not. And if not, I want to urge you today, if you've had the gospel today and you want to be saved, you just need to ask God just to save you. Hallelujah. Now I want to invite you to uh, be with us back uh, next week, uh, same time, Friday morning, 6 a.m., uh, you can also call me at 314-441-6177. And uh, you can also write us at thegospelsafari at gmail.com. Any comments, any questions, any prayer requests, and we will, we will actually pray for you. I just want to thank you for joining us today. We would like for you to join them every Friday night for a worship and teaching service from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. at 2813 North Hanley Road in St. Louis, Missouri. For more information, contact the ministry at 314 314- 441-6177 or email them at thegospelsafari at gmail.com well, you-